The following tutorial is requested by Rapid Motion Gaming, and he was asking if I could do a modeling tutorial, uh, specifically uh, a hand modeling tutorial. And in the future, I will be doing low poly modeling tutorials for game assets. So I'm going to go ahead and add a cube, and uh, I'm going to uh, subdivide this cube once. Uh, just kidding, I'm not. Uh, I'm. What I'm going to do is grab this cube, uh, extrude it. Uh, grab it, uh, grab x2, extrude it, x2, extrude it 2, and uh, what this is going to be is these four faces here are where we're going to extract the fingers from. So, now we can extrude this, uh, grab it y2, uh, 2, 2, and if you look at your hand, it's roughly uh, a square. And so I'm literally putting my hand up against the screen just to kind of see uh, what it would look like. Uh, so what I'm going to do is start bringing in some of these faces here. Turn proportional editing on. Uh, and it's it's just good to uh, get in the habit of doing this when you're using... Uh, uh, when you're doing natural modeling, it'll look a lot better. Uh, and so can bring this guy up a little bit, and this guy, and uh, just like that, and uh, yeah, that should be, should be good. And uh, what I'm going to do is add a couple of loop cuts here. So uh, I think if I press K, uh, I can do this. And what I'm just going to do is add some cuts in here, then press Enter. Uh, add another one right there. And there we go. So what these are going to be, just kidding. Uh, turn proportional editing off, and uh, I don't know what that vertice was. Uh, but uh, yeah, we can merge those, and then uh, we actually want to add another one right there. That should be good. Uh, so. <clears throat> what we can do from the top view here uh, is grab these and we're going to bring them in a little bit closer to this guy here. And these are going to be, if you look at your hand, there's almost uh, a divot when it starts to create the actual finger. That's what that's going to be. Uh, now what we can do is uh, make that just a little bit tighter uh, just for the sake of finger placement, and we can always adjust this later. Uh, that's going to be the pinkies, that's going to be a little bit smaller. Um, now, I am not the best at modeling, and I am willing to admit this. Uh, like a lot of people who are not very good at modeling, uh, but I will admit I am pretty awful at modeling. Uh, so yeah, so let's just get that out of the way. Uh, now, I'm going to add a cut right there, just like that, and uh, uh, just create some uh, some loops right here almost, and uh, do another one. And just like that, we have created a very nice uh, uh, loop, and the reason we have those two loop cuts there will be more evident later. But I am going to pull these two out uh, because uh, that's where our hand's going to be. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to pull that. I'm just going to pull this part out. And rotate that a little bit. Uh, and uh, grab that and pull it down a little bit. 
and uh, start rotating this just a little bit. Uh, and uh, that should be good. Now we do want to see if we can add two loop cuts down here at the bottom <clears throat> uh, for the bottom loops. Uh, but we need these guys here for this area so we can round it out a little bit later. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, uh, sorry, not add, or yes, add. I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller. Add two loop cuts here, two loop cuts there, and just create some faces there. And delete these faces here. And uh, what we can do is create some more loop cuts there. And uh, we can go into wireframe here and make these the pretty much the same. And you'll see what those will be for later. Uh, unless I already told you, I don't quite remember. Now we can add some faces here. Uh, whoops. And a uh, face here. Uh, face there. And then two loop cuts here. That's going to be pretty good. Now what we can do is select this area here for our hand and grab it outwards in the y direction. And you know always if you have it use a reference and what better reference than your own hand, right? Uh, so now what I'm going to do is add a couple of loop cuts here first on the top and a couple of loop cuts here to match that. Oh I guess we can't. Uh, oh well. And uh, a couple of loop cuts within here. We're going to add quite a few. Let me count actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, roughly, roughly eight. We'll go ahead and add eight, four, six, seven, eight. And that should be enough. Now if we look at this from this view, uh, we can start off by uh, making this just a bit smaller. Nice bit of a fingertip. Uh, and that. And uh, looking at my own finger, uh, there's little divots. Uh, this seems to stay down a little bit compared to this here. Uh, that almost goes like that. There are certain areas where it spikes up a little bit because of knuckles and things like that. Uh, just like that. And uh, we can create some faces here and uh, merge some of these because sometimes the way Blender works with its uh, uh, merging isn't so great. Uh, but what I can tell you is that by the end uh, the goal for this hand is so that it could be used inside the Blender game engine. Uh, the thing about the Blender game engine for those of you who don't know, I assume you do know if you're watching this tutorial though, uh, is everything has to be quite low poly for it to, to work. So now I'm going to grab everything and at first before I do that actually I'm going to delete this face here uh, and press W and just press smooth uh, a couple of times. Uh, maybe one more. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Uh, and I'm going to grab some of these faces here and bring them down a little bit but that basically made it so we don't have to round it uh, ourselves. It kind of rounds it for us. And one thing I'm going to do is bring that back a little bit to act almost like a knuckle. Uh, 
and uh, I'm going to bring that back to about right there. Uh, and that's going to be good. And uh, we can grab this here and bring that down. We do have to re-typologize this a little bit, uh, just to kind of get that shape we had. Uh, it's going to go there. It's going to come down a little bit. That can go up a little bit. Actually, that can. Uh, cool. Okay, so now what we can do is I'm going to add a loop cut right there. Just slide it a little bit little bit more and I'm going to grab these guys here and extrude it and scale it with portion letting off scale it inwards scale it on the y-axis a little bit uh, break it down I'm gonna press s or sorry uh, it's what was it uh, shift shift s maybe no uh, alt s no I can't remember uh, the separation tool, uh, a good way to do this is separated by, uh, if you don't know how, is just separated by doing what I just did by pressing P, and then it actually separates the actual object. Then we can scale that up a little bit, and we want to have an overhang right there. Uh, and then we can uh, just go like that a little bit. Um, and then we can grab that. And just grab that down a little bit, and just like that, we've got a pretty nice looking fingernail. And we can bring that up a little bit. We want to bring that down and back. And yeah, and just like that, we've created a nice little fingernail. Uh, and yeah, so what I am going to do is just go into my game here, or my top view here, and scale this. I'm going to turn personal editing, scale that down just a little, little bit, uh, just because it looks a little fat, in my opinion. Uh, then again, who am I to judge, right? <laughs> Uh, just kidding. Okay, so we'll grab that. And because we have this first finger down, uh, and most of your fingers look like this, look the same, or at least a video game character might, we can shift D this and skill it, uh, turn proportional editing off, skill it up a little bit, and I'm going to skill Z, skill Y, zero of those, skill it down a little bit, like that. And yeah, now that we've got that, we can make it a bit bigger. Uh, honestly, um, uh, your middle finger is not a whole lot bigger if you look at it like really it's just about that much bigger not even uh, it's a little bit bigger in certain areas but it should be good so what we can do now is I'm going to grab these two faces here and subdivide it and put two cuts uh, and uh, I'm going to grab this face here merge at last at last, I'm going to repeat this for all of these guys here. Uh, and the reason why is because that's kind of uh, our reference point, and then from there uh, we can adjust it more. But for now, I'm going to merge it at the actual hand rather than the finger. I'm going to I'm going to merge the finger to the hand rather than the hand to the finger. Uh, so subdivide that again. Uh, and this is a good method of connecting stuff, is just adding loop cuts to avoid faces. Uh, merge at last. And of course, you're going to want to add... Uh, how did I mess that up? Sorry guys, I created a try here. I don't want that one, just this one. Merge at last. I guess it's not at last, it's the one you select first.
first, really. And what you can also do is merge it center if it's if they're really close. Uh, but typically, you want to uh, want to keep a good typology and do it the other way. Okay, now we can start uh, bringing in these guys here. And what you can do, I guess, if you want, or I guess not. Never mind. Uh, but I'm just going to start bringing up uh, these knuckles a little bit. And uh, for some reason, I cannot uh, subdivide it or, uh, or put a loop cut where I want, uh, which is kind of annoying. But uh, oh well. I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. That looks uh, pretty decent. Okay, so. Uh, we can repeat what we just did. Grab this finger here. And uh, this actual finger is actually pretty much the same size. It's just a little bit bigger than our other finger, uh, our index, but a little bit smaller uh, than your middle finger. So. It's roughly the size we want, uh, and we'll fix the way this looks pretty soon here, don't worry about that. Uh, okay. Now we can subdivide this twice, subdivide the bottom one twice, if we can get a hold of it. Merge at last, merge at last. I'm picking the wrong <laughs> vertices here. And before I actually do anything else, I am going to grab these guys here and uh, bring these forward a little bit on the y-axis. The reason why is because if you look at your hand, this part is actually uh, comes forward a little bit uh, compared to these guys here. So we, we are trying to aim for a semi-realistic look, which means we do want this to look more autonomically, autonomically, I don't know what the word is. We want it to look more realistic, basically. So that, that'll add just a bit of simple realism there. What we can also do is go to the top and grab a couple of these guys and just bring it back just a little bit and kind of adjust that. Uh, and once again, we're going to grab this index here, shift D it, and this one's going to be quite small. Uh, where if you actually look at your pinky, uh, if you just hold your hand static, the pinky is actually quite uh, rotated this way. And we haven't rotated any other fingers yet, but uh, all the fingers do have a slight rotation to them. The pinky is quite noticeably uh, the farthest rotation, but before we get on that, uh, we will want to do some of these other rotations so that they, they don't look so, that the pinky doesn't look so out of place. But we can... Uh, grab some of these and rotate them just a little bit and we want to turn on proportional editing for this typically yeah. just like that and then we can grab two of those and uh, yeah so we can start doing this again so we'll subdivide that uh, subdivide that one and reduce the number of cuts there. Uh, however, that's looking kind of funky if you look at that. Uh, so we are going to adjust this just to fit more naturally. And now we can start, uh, of course, 
doing this. And I already messed up. Okay. And this is going to look a little funny until we actually adjust it. But uh, that's alright because uh, we will end up adjusting it to fix it. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can just connect these. Don't worry about it looking good because uh, it won't until we fix the pinky because uh, the pinky uh, is a little... A little crooked right now. And we'll adjust this in a second. Merge at last, merge at last. Another thing we forgot to do is grab this up just a little bit uh, for that knuckle. And we're going to do the same thing here. And we're also going to uh, uh, create a pinky, which looks a little better. And uh, we can do that by just slowly rotating the pinky ever so slightly on each loop cut. And bringing it in ever so slightly once again. We can bring a loop cut in there if we want to make it look a little bit more natural the way we're pulling it. And uh, basically just just make that look a little a little smoother. We can grab these and actually press smooth if we want to. So yeah, that is a pretty decent looking hand. Uh, although those knuckles are really high. Okie dokie. So, now that we've got that looking pretty decent, uh, we're going to grab uh, the last part of this uh, finger here uh, and shift D it and scale it up and rotate it and scale it up. And maybe scale it down and create our thumb. Uh, some things about the thumb is this scales in quite a bit. Uh, that doesn't scale it that much. But certain parts of the thumb uh, do scale in quite a bit. Uh, it's a little weird uh, the way it, the way our thumb actually looks, but uh, you know, it's it's just part of the way our thumb is, I guess. We can sort of begin to bring uh, these inwards. And uh, if you look at your thumb, it's, it's actually not that massive. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, and that should be a lot better. There we go. And uh, we will fix this in a second because the thumb is weird in the way it sits. Uh, as well as the little fleshy muscle area underneath your thumb. Uh, where your thumb kind of connects, the muscle that connects there. And uh, I'm actually going to teach you a interesting trick about that muscle. Uh, for any of you who like cooking uh, uh, meats, uh, especially steak, uh, when you're trying to test the medium rare, rare, uh, medium well, stuff like that, a good way to actually see that is with this uh, muscle right here, which we're about to bring down a little bit. Uh, with this muscle, um, the way it actually uh, works if you if you touch it to different fingers it'll get tenser and tenser uh, so if you touch your thumb uh, on one of your hands uh, to your index finger so here to here uh, and you feel that muscle that is actually what medium rare is supposed to feel like uh, if you poke a stake it would have this similar very similar uh, 
thickness or kind of gushiness to it. And if you just leave your thumb like that, that's supposed to be rare. Touching it to your middle finger is supposed to be uh, medium, and I think your uh, ring finger is uh, well done or something like that, and your pinky's uh, well, or well done. I can't quite remember. I think it's uh, rare, uh, medium rare, medium, uh, well, well done. Or something like that, because I know that there's there's differences. Anyway, uh, and then you grab these. I actually learned that in my years of cooking. cooking. Uh, yeah, so we can bring these up. Uh, let's slide. Uh, bring those in. Bring this one down a little bit. And uh, now we can bring our thumb down a little bit too, because we're going to grab uh, some of these guys here. And uh, maybe this guy there. And uh, Just kind of rotate it and grab it until we can deselect this area here and uh, do the same thing uh, with that thumb. And with this thumb, it also has a tendency, if you put your hand up even on the screen or something like that, uh, it has a tendency To rotate a certain uh, a certain direction, it's got a tendency to, tendency to rotate this way, uh, which we can do to achieve more uh, realistic uh, thumb. Is to rotate it this way. So I'm just going to look from this angle and rotate it ever so slightly. And just like that, we've created just a slightly more realistic uh, thumb. And it's also going to help in making the hand look a little more relaxed. But this thumb is looking pretty big, so I'm going to scale that down a little bit. And uh, bring it in, and that's going to look a little bit better. And uh, maybe we can actually grab all these guys and just ever so slightly. Bring those in a little bit, make them look a little smaller. Uh, as well as this is looking, these are looking pretty, pretty thick. There we go. Uh, now what we can do is also uh, rotate these thumbs, these fingers. So if you look at your finger, just like in a neutral pose, uh, they tend to. Uh, Uh, they tend to uh, sorry they tend to uh, kind of have like this uh, this sort of fall off uh, they 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 rotate so I'm going to turn on proportional editing here and uh, rotate it just a little bit and then grab it and Rotate it a little bit more. Just like that, that's going to create a much more uh, much more relaxed looking finger, which is going to create so much more realism when you're looking at it. Uh, and most of the time, it's going to have a animation anyways. Uh, you know, most of the time when you see it, it's going to be doing some sort of animation. Uh, so it won't be too big of a deal. But still, any form of realism just adds so much to the to any game really. I mean, that's part of the reason I really like Assassin's Creed is I can look at any part of the game and there's always something that surprises me because I look at it and it just looks real. It just there there are things about that game that they just they spend so much time and detail and then just making it more fun to explore because of the the realistic aspect of the game. Uh, even though it's 
it's clearly a fantasy game. Uh, so we can do the same thing for uh, these fingers here. And this finger is looking a little... All these fingers actually are looking a little beefy, except for the pinky. There we go. And I'm going to do the, these two at the same time, because if you actually try and move your pinky, uh, I can do it on one hand. I can move my pinky without moving my index finger. But they actually move very similar to each other. Uh, which is kind of funny, because uh, I used to do that at, at, uh, as a party trick. I'd be like, hey, I bet you can't move these two fingers, and I could, and didn't actually use it as a at a party ever, but uh, I did make a couple couple dollars off that in my uh, my elementary days. And just like that, we've created a much more relaxed looking pose. And honestly, uh, these hands, this hand doesn't look you know super fabulous, uh, but there are things you can do to kind of make it look even better. And so right now I'm just bringing up uh, loop cuts to make that tendon that goes back all the way. Uh, and I'm just going to grab these guys here and bring those up just a little bit. And just looking from the top, that looks pretty good. And the bottom, that looks all right. And uh, yeah. And so now if we apply skin texture to this it would look pretty good but uh, unfortunately I do not have enough time to do a skin texture today uh, so that will be for next episode so I'm gonna get rid of these faces here edges sorry edges here pardon me and uh, maybe bring those back a little bit and voila so if we add a very simple skin texture, I don't know what kind of skin you guys have, but mine's about this color. No. Uh, yeah, that, actually that looks pretty good. Uh, you know, you can just kind of see what this will look like. Uh, and what you can do is also go shade, uh, shade smooth, and uh, where is it? Uh, Still smooth it out. Yeah, we'll add another smooth in there. Uh, but what we will do is grab all these faces in here just real quick. I just noticed this. Uh, and maybe grab these up a little bit with proportional editing on. So grab it Z. Actually, maybe we'll just literally grab like a couple and turn it on. And just like, yeah, that's much better. Now it looks already just a little bit more realistic. Yeah, and so we can add this and we can we can do different things like, uh, you know, mark sharp uh, and stuff like that. Or no, what's the one? I think it's called um, mark or shade or mark flat or something like that or mark hard. Uh, I don't know where that is, but... You know, there's, there's there's different things you can do to make this just look a little bit more. Symmetrize. Oh, that looks great. Oh, uh, there's little things you can do to tweak it. And, uh, yeah. So, if you enjoyed this tour tutorial, let me know. Uh, next episode, we'll be texturing it. Uh, obviously, I'm not the best at modeling. Uh, but, I'm willing to admit that. And I'm always looking on ways to improve my modeling which I think is what's important if you know you're bad but you're willing to improve I think that's that's the golden feature right that's what that's what I like about blender is the people who teach me to improve yeah so that's not even that great but uh, it'll work for a game uh, and especially with games this is only uh, just under a thousand verts and so what you could do if you wanted is to decimate it. Uh, you could go 0.5, and that even still looks pretty decent. Uh, however, I'm not going to decimate it until 
uh, I finish uh, my textures because I prefer I prefer having clean typology when uh, you know texture mapping, uh, but uh, UV unwrapping. So yeah, next episode, like I said, we will be looking into creating textures for this. Uh, so yeah, tune in for that. But until next time, thank you for watching. Please leave your uh, comments in the section below. Uh, if you want to see any future modeling or game engine tutorials, just let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.